Hey, do you have a sec? Hey, it's Christian. It's December 19. It is day six as we count down on the Christmas fitness advent calendar. And today we're back inside because not only was it raining cats and dogs, it was windy. So I was worried about stuff blowing over, i.e. umbrella that I would protect the camera with. Uh, so I played it safe, brought it inside, and today we are adding a beautiful isometric hold. This is the chair pose with leg lift. The way to do this one is you're gonna sink down into a chair position, that means you bend your knees, you stick your butt out a little bit, weight is into your heels, and then what you do is lift one of your legs straight. So you're gonna have your arms over your head, straight as you can, and lift up one of your legs, see if you can get the knee above the other one, flex your foot, keep every muscle in that leg engaged, 15 seconds on one side, and then swap it over to the other side, and then we move on. So let's ignore my cat and Let's get going in three, two, one, and go. Now, as I just said, you're sinking your weight into your heels, hands are overhead, and lift one leg. If you absolutely must modify this one and you can't maintain that balance, go to just two feet, just maintain a chair. The whole intention here is that an isometric hold on one leg is absolutely gonna work your balance, and you want to just switch it up there at the 15 second mark, uh, change and, and maintain that uh, straight leg with tension in the leg. So you're done in three, two, one, and done. Grab your mat, we're going into the bicycle, and we're gonna lay down on the floor and get ready for this. Remember, your knuckles are at your forehead, you're not pulling your head. We're going in two, one, and go. The bicycle twist, you're just bringing one knee up, maintaining a crunch the whole time, and twisting. This is working your obliques. You wanna twist elbow to knee, elbow to knee as you alternate, and make sure you are not pulling on your head. Don't pull on your neck. This is not about trying to wrench yourself up with your arms. This is about the core engagement. You got eight more seconds here, so keep pushing through, slow and steady. If you want to intensify this one, point your toes up, then a two, one, and done. Hop up, we're gonna finish off this block number five with a burpee. So get the mat out of the way if you had one. Going three, two, one, and go. This is all about getting your heart racing. So it doesn't matter about whether or not you're making this a high impact move or you've taken the, uh, the, the hurt out of it. You want to jump back into a plank, jump up and then jump. And that's my version. If you want to step back into your plank or you want to take your jump out and just stand up on your tiptoes or you want to go extreme and do a jump knee tuck, it's entirely up to you, but you're done in two, one and Hey, that's it. That's your first block of work. Block number five is out of the way. You have a 30 second break here. Take this time to breathe and we're going to have to go into a couple of floor moves. So you're going to want to get that mat back out. Now we are going into a uh, single leg bridge first, the, uh, the marching bridge. And what I want you to think about here is getting those hips up as high as you can. We're going in seven seconds. So get down on the ground and get ready for this one. Lay back, hands at your side, up on your heels, two, one, and go. So you're bringing your knee forward, you're flexing your foot to keep that leg in tension at a nice 90 degree angle and bring your knee up as you're keeping your hips elevated as high as you can. Make, try and get a straight line from your shoulders, which is your, your touchdown point, all the way up to your knees and then your feet, your heels are on the ground under your knees and you're lifting one leg at a time. So keep the hips up. You're done here in four, three, two, one and roll over, get that mat out of the way. We're going into the angry bear next. As you've seen before, this is in the sort of cat cow position, your dog position, and you're going two, one, and hop in those knees just two inches off the ground. Hop in your feet left center, right center, as quick as you can. This one is going to definitely spike your heart rate and definitely work your quads. I always find that my muscles just above the knees are the most sore right as soon as I finish this one. So you don't need to look down at your knees, look down straight in front of you. Your hands should be uh, straight in front of your shoulders. You're done in two, one, and that's it. Get back onto that mat, we're going to the CY reach. So you wanna sit and get your legs in that low position and recline back with your arms in the C, two, one, and go. You're gonna reach up to one side, making the Y shape, and then reach, sit, lay yourself back down just into a low, low, low crunch, and you're in the C, and then up to the other side for the Y position. 
This is again about working your obliques, so you definitely want to hold each position for just a fraction of a second. As I said before, normally we'd be doing three to five second holds in each one, but just keep working left and then twist back into the center and then twist back up to the right. And we're done. So hop on up, we're going to the diamond drill next. If you need a marker, set those out or just visualize a spot. Today I'm using two and we're going to one and go. Out and in, out and in, front and back and maintain a, a constant rhythm here to facilitate moving through this this move. It is a tricky one to get a good rhythm going and I find if I'm moving for one minute in this particular uh, workout it is a lot easier to do because once I've gotten that groove it's easy to maintain but you're done here in seven seconds so just keep working left and right in and out. You've done three, two, one and you've got 30 seconds here as your rest. Next up we're going to go into the tricep push-ups. So take a minute to breathe and if you need to get down on the ground and just that's where you're taking your rest, that's okay. But don't lay down, don't, uh, don't give up. We've got four blocks, three blocks of work left and we're gonna work hard through them. In 10 seconds, we're gonna start those tricep push-ups. And remember, your hands are close to your shoulders but slightly back and your elbows are gonna be rubbing your rib cage. So going in three, two, one, and go. Drop as low as you can. Today, I'm using the push-up stands for the assists for the tricep push-up and I wanna make sure that I am definitely hugging my arms in. Uh, I was able to get roughly the same number, but I find this is a, lot, a little bit easier on the hands and uh, you can get a deeper push-up when you're using an assist stand like I am here. So it's entirely up to you. Uh, rotate your hands to point slightly out if you find that's easier to get your elbows in. Done in two, one, and there you go. Hop on up, we're going into the plyo knee pop. Now this one you've seen before, we're switching at 15 seconds, but we're going at three, two, one, and go. Front foot stays and will hop off the ground as you bring that back knee up and jump it, and you take it back, touch the ground just for a brief moment before you bring it forward again, driving the knee forward and swinging those arms. You're transitioning the other leg now and continue with the other leg to pop it up and hop as you bring the knee forward. This is about getting that heart rate spike as well as working your legs. So we got three more seconds here. Two, one, and done. Get back down onto the ground. We're going into the reaching sit up, another core move here. So get the mat, lay down, get those knees bent, hands overhead, two, one, and go. So reaching your arms straight up as you sit up, reaching back just a little bit, arching your back, and then lay back down. You want to definitely think about maintaining a constant crunch here in your in your core as you sit up and then you're arching your back. It actually works your back as well. So this is all about your, your central body. Your core is not just your abs, it is also your back. So work on all those things and think about these muscles and feel them as you're doing your move. We're done here in three seconds. So just keep pushing, done. Get that mat out of the way. We are going to finish off this block with jumping jacks. So we're going in four seconds, three, two, one, and go. Jumping jacks, as you well know, are one of the staples of cardio moves. It's just about getting your arms and your legs moving at the same time. Uh, this one, of course, if you have shoulder mobility issues, you do a lower range in, in motion with your arms, but uh, speed up if you can. Today, I managed to get going a little bit faster towards the end as I'm thinking about it and uh, knowing I've got 30 second break after this. We're done at three, two, one, and finished. So take that 30 seconds right now to breathe, grab a towel if you need to, water. If you need more than 30 seconds, pause the video, take that break, and come back to it when you're ready. Next up, we're going into the YTWL, which is a shoulder mobility move, and uh, it's all about working your shoulders to uh, extend your range of motion. So we're going in 10 seconds here. Just breathe and take this time, set up for it. Four, three, two, one and go. So get those arms over your head as you make a Y shape. You're bent forward at the hips. You have got your butt sticking out. Your knees are bent. You're extending your arms and making them from the Y to the T out of the side. W with your elbows back and L with your hands flipped up. So the YTWL working through these four different positions to challenge your shoulders. This is about the mobility. It's not about going fast here. We're done in three, two, one and done. Next up, we've got the tiptoe squats. So 
make your foot position just a little bit wider and uh, bend forward at the knees, uh, bend, so bend forward, bend your knees and get up there and go. And you've got a flat back, arms are straight overhead and you're just getting into that tiptoe and squatting. Now, you may notice here that there's a slight jump in the video. Uh, partway through this particular workout, the card in my camera said it was full and I happened to catch it at the end of the tiptoe squat so I didn't get too far in, but I went and dumped everything off and then started again in this workout. So that's why that happened, but keep working hard, keep working through this. Five seconds left, tiptoe squats, get butt low and squat. And time is up, so get down on the ground. We're going into the Sphinx leg lift, Sphinx plank. You get your elbows padded. This is the best way to do it. Three, two, one, and go. Holding a nice tight core, squeeze the glute as you lift your leg. You don't need to lift your legs high to get this one worked out. It's not pointing your foot as you lift either. Keep it flexed if you can. Breathe through this, looking straight down in front of you. Engage your core, engage your glutes. Lift alternating legs. It's not about speed. It's about getting a nice form here. So keep pushing through. You know, five seconds left, and then we're going into the speed skater after the quick transition. Two, one, and done. So hop on up, get your mat out of the way, and get ready for that speed skater. I want to see you move as fast as you can today. Three, two, one, and go. Left to right, just throwing those arms side to side. You're pushing, your hips should be burning, your glutes should be burning, and you want to make sure that you are working as hard as you can to keep your body forward, but your chest and your eyes are up. So just swing from side to side and work fast as you can. Bend the knees, flinging that leg in behind the other knee, and you're done in six seconds. Five, four, three, two, one, and eight. You've got a 30 second break here, so take it. Get the deep breath going in through the nose and out through the mouth. You definitely want to be able to get this break at its maximum as we're going into the final block and we're going to work hard. We're going to lead with the push-ups in just 15 seconds. So if you need to get down on the ground and take a little plank or get on your knees for to, to rest here, go ahead and do that. We're going in six, five, four, three, two, one, and go. So your push-ups are dropping low with your hands in front of your shoulders. You want to get your arms flaring out at that 45 degrees and you're keeping a straight body from your head all the way to your heels. Drive those heels back, engage your core and push down. This is as much a chest workout as it is a, a, a an arm move. So you want to work hard and again ignore my cat who definitely wants to come in and play. So three seconds here, two, one and hop up. We're going into those box squats in just a second. So shake it out, get those legs ready to go. Squat down into the heels. We're going in three, two, one, and go. Again, in weight into the heels, you're dropping your butt, you're keeping your chest and eyes up. Throw those arms as you jump and rotate 90 degrees to one side, and then you're rotating back to center and then rotate to the other direction. So this is not about a deep squat, it's not about a high jump, it's as much a leg and cardio combined move. So this is about just working hard for working fast for 30 seconds, and you're done in three seconds. Two, one, and done. I know I was cooked by the time I was finished that one, but we've got two moves left and we're getting down into the plank to take a quick little breather. So two, one, and plank it out. Hold this position straight as a board. Breathe here. Take this moment to rest before we finish off the day. It is about engaging your entire body, but take any tension you do not need and get rid of it. Focus here as you, as you have this Zen moment to breathe and get ready for the final move. We're done in seven seconds, so maintain that plank just a little bit longer. Don't let your back sag. Two, one, and you're done. So hop up, we're gonna finish off with a soccer run and just make sure you get a couple of deep breaths here before we start. Two, one, and go. This is the soccer run. We've seen this since day number one. You know, you get your knees up high and wide, get those feet up in between your knees as you alternate, swing your arms, maintain a decent pace here. You've only got 30 seconds of work in each move and this, the finale move, definitely is going to be a burner, but pick it up here for the last 10 seconds. If you are doing nothing else today, it is sprinting to the end of this workout. So move your arms and feet as fast as you can, and you're done. That's it. D 
day 19 is in the books. We are one more day to finish off the next block, and then there's only four more days before we're finished altogether. There will be a total of 24 moves when we're done, and I hope the 24th day absolutely leaves you with nothing left. We're getting there, and I hope you have enjoyed it so far. Thanks for sticking with me. We'll see you tomorrow. Smile and sweat.